Hello, welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to go over how I fixed one of my SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofers that broke. I was watching something in the theater the other day and happened to notice no sound output from the right rear subwoofer. I had power to the plate amp because there were blue lights that were on and I could still connect to the subwoofer from the SVS app and make changes inside the app, but the driver itself had no output at all. I started to diagnose it myself by process of elimination. I first went into my mini DSP to make sure I had sound output to the channel that this subwoofer is on and didn't find anything wrong inside of the mini DSP. I then double checked both ends of the RCA cable at the mini DSP and at the subwoofer. No issues found there either. I unplugged the subwoofer from power, let it sit for a few minutes, and then plugged it back in, thinking maybe a power reset would work. Still nothing. Since I have another SVS sub in the back row that was still working, I removed the RCA cable from this working sub and plugged it into the broken sub, and still no output. I then went back into the SVS app and performed a factory reset. After the reset was done, I adjusted the settings back to where they should be and tested again and still nothing. At this point, I contacted SVS Tech Support for further instructions. They were super helpful and emailed over some instructions on removing the plate amp and performing some diagnostics to determine where the issue was and what we would do to ultimately get it fixed. To remove the plate amp from the subwoofer enclosure, we only need a number three hex bit and possibly a small flathead screwdriver to pry the amp loose if it is stuck to the enclosure. The 9 volt battery and two paper clips will be used after the plate amp is removed to perform a bump test of the subwoofer driver itself to make sure it is still functional. Using the correct number three hex bit, remove the 10 screws from the plate amp. After the screws are all removed, you might have to use your small flathead screwdriver to gently pry the amp loose so it can be removed. Another option to remove it instead of a flathead screwdriver is to use a small nail head with a pliers or vice grip, as seen in the pictures here, to pull the plate amp loose to prevent any damage that might occur to the subwoofer enclosure by prying on it with a flathead screwdriver. After the amplifier is loose and you can remove it, locate the connection that has a red positive and a black negative wire attached. This is the subwoofer driver connection. There is some green sticky glue that might have to be scored or removed in order for you to press down on the release tab in order to remove the connection from the plate amp. After the driver connection is removed, you can proceed to check the plate amp over and look for any other loose connections. There are several other connectors. Make sure they are fully seated and tight and give the entire amp a good look over for anything that seems out of place. After you've checked the plate amp connections, go back to the subwoofer enclosure and follow the wire connector that goes to the subwoofer driver itself. You will want to make sure that the positive and negative connections are tight at the subwoofer driver. I simply reached my hand in after visually inspecting to see that they were still attached and not hanging down completely unattached or something obvious, and wiggled them just a little bit to check to make sure a secure connection was at the driver. I didn't find any problems with mine. Now that all the connections have been checked on the plate amp, it's time to perform a bump test of the subwoofer driver itself. This is where the 9 volt battery and the two paper clips come into play. Start by unfolding the two paper clips into a straight line. Then you will insert them into the positive and negative terminals of the wire connection itself. Make sure you note which location is being used by the positive and negative wires. My connector has four total spots, but it's the middle two that are being used by the two wires that go to the subwoofer driver. After you've inserted the paper clips into the correct spots in the connector, make sure they aren't touching each other as they need to be isolated when you connect them to the nine volt battery. I used two hands for this part, my left to hold the paper clips apart 
and my right to make the connection to the 9 volt battery. Make sure you connect the positive paper clip to the positive terminal of the 9 volt battery and the negative to the negative side of the 9 volt battery. When you make the connection, you should hear a scratching sound from the subwoofer driver and the driver itself should move outwards roughly 1 8 inch and stay in this position until the connection to the battery is ended. You'll want another person to watch the driver since you can't really see it when making this connection on the back side of the sub enclosure. This is what it sounds like and looks like when you make the connection to the battery. I followed up my results of the wire connections all being tight and secure and the bump test passing to SVS Tech Support and they sent out a replacement plate amp. They also included a return shipping label so that I can return the broken plate amp to them at no cost to me since I'm still within the SVS warranty terms. This is the unboxing of the new plate amp. Installation of the new plate amp is just the opposite of the removal. Make sure you connect the subwoofer driver connection securely to the new plate amp before you install the amp onto the enclosure and install the 10 screws to secure the plate amp. Now it's time to put the subwoofer back into place and test it out. I started by connecting my RCA cable to the LFE input on the amp, then making sure that the physical on and off switch was in the off position on the plate amp. I connected the power cable to the plate amp and plugged that into the power outlet. After the power cord was plugged in, I flipped the physical switch on the plate amp to the on position and hoped for the best. The amp appeared to power up like normal, so now it was time to go to the SVS app on my phone and change a few settings before the final test. After opening up the SVS app, I had no issue connecting to the new plate amp. I followed the menu from the top to the bottom to check all the settings of this subwoofer. I only had to change the port tuning from the default mode to the sealed mode since I have the port plugs installed and are running these subwoofers in the sealed mode. I also renamed it to the right sub so it's easy to recognize within the app and I also changed the power setting to auto. And that's it. Time to give it a try. So as you can see, the new plate amp fixed the subwoofer right up. It's now working again as it should. I have no idea what caused it to fail in the first place. The subwoofer is connected to a Panamax surge protected outlet, 
We haven't had any storms or power issues that I'm aware of. Luckily, it was under warranty, and it was an easy fix. Thanks for watching as always. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.